Like many of us, for the past several weeks I have been stuck at home, so I figured why not use that free time to build an app and get rich. Okay, maybe not get rich, but I am going to build an app because I think it would be a lot of fun and a good experience. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, I'm just going to go ahead and build an app just like everybody else. How original. Okay, maybe it's not the most original idea, but if you click the link here, you can see my earlier video explaining why I'm deciding to do this. So first things first, I had to decide what I wanted my app to focus on. And my first thought was education, because in my experience, a lot of education apps aren't that well designed and use a lot of old technology. Also, there aren't as many big players in education as there are in other categories like, say, social media. So I started looking through different categories in the App Store, trying to find apps that had a lot of users, but either had low reviews or just weren't that well built and seemed like something I could replicate. I quickly got into the test prep category, mainly the SAT and the GRE. I found that these two test prep categories had a lot of apps with over 100,000 users, but the actual apps themselves seemed very old fashioned and weren't that well designed. After looking at these apps a little bit, I realized that building a full test prep app right out of the gate would probably be a little bit difficult for just me. So I decided to simplify and focus on just the MVP or minimum viable product. So I decided to focus in on flashcards first, specifically GRE flashcards. Now the reason I decided to focus on the GRE before the SAT is the GRE had a smaller base of users. The SAT is taken by basically every student who's going from high school to college, but the GRE is only taken by people going from college to graduate school, and then only in specific fields. So because there were fewer users, I figured I could build the initial app and kind of work out all the kinks before later reskinning it, changing out the words for the SAT, and then redeploying to a larger audience somewhere down the line. So I proceeded to download every GRE vocab app that I could find, trying to figure out what was annoying about some of them and which parts I liked. I quickly realized that most of the apps had a pretty poor actual flashcard experience, where you had to tap a tiny little corner of the card in order to dismiss them. I figured why not replace this with a swipe to dismiss mechanism that was a lot easier. Also a lot of these apps had really complicated navigation considering it was just flashcards. I figured I could probably flatten this navigation and make it simpler with just one or two pages instead of having to dig through pages and pages of setup just to look at some vocab words. Normally before you build a product, you would first build a prototype. Before Tesla mass produces a bunch of cars, they first build a prototype car, which basically looks like what the final product will look like, has most of the features, but maybe isn't a fully built out car that you would actually sell to a customer. In app development, it's the same way. Before you actually build the full app, you'll build some kind of mocked up version using a program which lets you basically lay out what all the different pages of the app will look like, maybe add some buttons that can direct you around the page, but doesn't have any of the core functionality like actually putting in the data or any of the back end to it. So before I actually started building my app, I decided to design the entire thing in Adobe Creative Cloud, specifically Adobe XD. I chose this because I could get it for free and just mock out my ideas for what I would later build. So this here is my design in Adobe XD. You can see here I basically laid out all the different pages of my app and maybe some different menus that would pop up on the pages. So on the first page, on my home page, I would basically have a list of all the different words. If you swiped the word away, you could mark it as learned and you could have some kind of alphabetical scrolling. I then had the menu button on the top left, a profile button on the top right, and a study button which would take you to the study view. Now I don't want to have to walk through all the different pages of the app individually, but basically these are all the different pages that are going to exist in the final version of the app. So that was all the pages I need except for my account page. So I'm going to build that now. So this right here represents all the different pages that are going to be in the app. Once I finished designing my app, the next step was to decide how I actually wanted to program it. Now in today's app development world, there's kind of two ways you can go about this. You can either do native development, which would basically be programming directly for say Android or iOS, or you can use some kind of framework. 
Now, since I eventually want to release this for both iOS and Android, and I don't have development teams for both of those platforms, I figured I would use a framework to simplify it for me. So the two frameworks that I'm familiar with are Ionic and Flutter. Ionic is basically just a website that lives under an app on your phone. This makes it really easy to build if you have a lot of website building experience. The downside to Ionic is because it's basically a website, it feels more like a website and less like a native app, and it might be a little bit less responsive. Because of this, I decided not to go this route. The next option I looked at was Flutter. Google defines Flutter as, Flutter is Google's UI toolkit for building beautiful, natively compiled applications for mobile, web, and desktop from a single code base. What this really means is when you build something in Flutter, you can deploy it to both Android and iOS, as well as to a website if you want to. But it actually makes the app feel a little bit more like a native app. Now, the only downside to Flutter is it uses Dart, which isn't a language that I've used before. Instead, I've done most of my work in JavaScript. But I figured, based on what I've seen online, Dart is actually pretty similar to JavaScript, so I should be able to pick it up pretty quickly. The other plus side to Flutter is it was built by Google, so it has a lot of support from tutorials on YouTube, which should be helpful for a newbie like me while trying to learn this process. So at this point, I had the framework, I had the design, all that was left was to start developing. I decided to use GitHub as my source code repository. Now a source code repository is basically just where you store your code so that's not all sitting on your computer where you could potentially lose it. The other advantage to source code repositories is they do change control management for you. So for example, if I made a change to my app and I realized that it broke everything, I could basically click a single button on GitHub to revert or undo that change, and I would be back where I started. This just makes it easier to kind of manage the code and different ideas in the project. For an IDE, I used Visual Studio Code just because I'd used it before, and it had some good plugins for Flutter and Dart. Finally, for actually testing the app, I used both my Android phone, which I own, and I also used Android Studio. Now, Android Studio comes with a built-in emulator where you can basically download different models of phone and see what your app would look like on different phone screen sizes. This is really useful when I don't actually have a whole bunch of devices that I can use to test. So the first thing I did was build the UI. I built all the different pages that I would actually use for the app and just kind of left it blank with placeholders where I would put the data later. After I finished building the basic UI and testing it on a couple different devices, I then went into state. So for example, if a user swiped a card to the right to say that they learned it, the state would remember that, hey, this word should now be in the learned category. Now, in order to do this, I just created a separate class to handle all the state things. Now, maybe this might not be the best practice, but it was kind of quick and dirty and I needed it just to get things done quickly. One of the issues I ran into while managing state was the fact that when a user exits the app, we need to remember all the words that they had before. So I had two options here. I could either save that to a database online, or I could just save that locally to their phone. I decided for the sake of time, I would just save it locally to their phone. So if they were ever to delete the app completely, they would lose all their progress. But if they just closed the app and came back into it, they could pick up where they left off. Once I had the state and the UI set up, I basically had all the structure built for the actual app, but I still needed to put the words in the app. Now, in order to do this, it actually took quite a long time. My initial thought was I would just use a DynamoDB in AWS to hold all the words, and then when the user opened the app, I would pull the words down from the database. The problem with this is I would have to set up the connection to the database, the user would have to always be online in order to use the app, and actually typing in words to an online database all day is really difficult. Now, I can't just take words from an existing dictionary because those words and their definitions are actually intellectual property. It would be stealing. So I actually had to go in and write my own definitions, my own synonyms for every single word that I wanted to include in the app. In order to make this easier, I just used a Google Sheet where I had the word, I had the definition, I had an example, and I had synonyms for every single word that I was going to include. I then wrote up a quick node script where I could upload this to a database, and then another script where I could download it in JSON format. 
JSON format is basically just a format that makes it a little bit easier for the app to read. Now this might seem like it would be really simple and it probably should have been, but this actually ended up taking me probably almost a week on its own just to build how to get the words into the app. So at this point, I basically had the app built, but the only thing I hadn't yet thought about was monetization. Now there were a couple ways I could go about monetizing the app. I could make it a paid app, or I could make it so that there are in-app purchases, or I could just use advertising. And there are pros and cons to each option. Now, advertising is probably the easiest. You know, you can just throw an ad into the app using one of Google's libraries. A little bit harder would be monetizing the app, just because you probably have to build a free version and then a premium version where you just pay to remove the ads. And then the hardest version would be in-app purchases, where I'd actually have to program in different things that the users could buy. Maybe they could buy tests for their words or they could buy word packs to get more words. Ultimately, for the MVP, I decided to just use in-app advertising to keep things simple. Now, even under in-app advertising, there's a lot of different potential categories. You can use a banner ad, which is just like a square ad that sits either the top or the bottom of your page, and you get paid whenever a user clicks on it. Another option is an interstitial ad, which is a full page ad that pops up and you have to click an X in order to dismiss it. The problem with full page ads is they can be a little distracting and they'll annoy your user if you use them too often. So you have to be very sparing in their use. The third potential option is a native ad. Now in a native ad, I basically design the shape of the ad and make it fit in with the rest of the app. So in this case, I might say, replace one of the words in the list with an advertisement. Reddit actually does this a lot on their website. The hard part about this is it's a little bit of extra work to actually design the ad. Now, the final avenue I could have gone down is in-app purchases. Now, if I were to actually do this, I think that I would go with some form of gamification. So for example, every time a user learns a word, they get a point. Maybe if they learn 10 words in a row, a little screen pops up that says, hey, you just earned 10 points for 10 words in a row. How would you like to double those points by watching an ad for me? Now this gamification encourages the user to click the ad and basically interact with your app more. So this would definitely drive up monetization. The problem with this is I would have to create user accounts for every user. I would have to build the different screens. It would just be a lot of extra work on top of this. In the future, I think I'm definitely gonna go with some form of gamification, but for the MVP, I was just gonna stick with a banner ad that would appear on the study page and an interstitial ad, which would appear whenever a user exited the study page or maybe when they entered the study page. I didn't want it to appear while people were in the middle of studying because I thought that would be distracting. And I didn't want any ads to appear on the front page that the user gets when they first open the app because that just seems like a bad user experience to me. The final part of building the app was actually releasing it to the world via the Google Play Store. Now, in order to do this, I had to first set up an account with Google Play and basically register some way for them to pay me, let them know what the name of the app was going to be. Then I had to download some keys, which I used to basically sign my app so that they knew that anytime I uploaded the app or pushed some kind of update, they could verify that I was the one updating it and not some malicious third party. Now, once I had the app actually uploaded, I could then look at releases. Now, Google Play has a couple different releases I could set up. I could set up in alpha stage, where basically I have to actually give you a link to the app in order for you to download it. Then once I finished with alpha, I was able to promote it to beta. Now in the beta stage, it's actually in the Google Play Store. So I gave the beta link to my family and then they gave me a couple improvements that I could add to the app. Finally, once you're done with beta, you could actually roll it out to production. And production is just the full-on uploaded to the App Store available to everyone. One of the things I learned while actually moving the app between these different stages is it actually takes a really long time to promote. So when I first uploaded the app to the alpha stage, it took about a week for the app to actually appear and be downloadable. Then when I promoted it from alpha to beta, it probably took about four days before it was actually available on beta. And then when I promoted to production, it was probably around the same amount of time. It took four days just to get there. So if you actually upload an app to alpha and wanted it to get all the way to production, it could take you a good two weeks just to do that. On the flip side, the Google Play Store actually had a lot of really cool features. They had a section where I could look at 
crash analytics for the app. I could upload a Firebase analytics package where I could see how many users went to different pages, what pages were they on when they quit, did the app ever crash when users did a certain action. It seemed like there was a lot of really, really cool data that they could generate. Now, I don't exactly know how I would use this at this point, but it's just interesting stuff to look at. They also have automatic tracking for different things like which users have downloaded your app, how many users deleted the app, how long did they keep the app before they deleted it. All these different features could be super, super useful. So there I was. I had built my first app. I had uploaded it to the Play Store. I had added some monetization features and I released it out to the world. Now there are a couple improvements that I wanna to make to this app at some point in the future. One of the most obvious improvements I wanna do is add user accounts. Right now, if a user downloaded the app and then moved to a different phone, all of their existing progress would be lost. Also adding user accounts would allow me to introduce some really interesting new features like gamification, where I could make the app more of a game and make learning words a little bit more enticing to actually stay and do for a little bit longer. Another improvement I wanna do is I actually ended up dropping the alphabetical scrolling list from the app just because I couldn't get it working. So I'd like to go back and re-add that to the app. Going through this entire process, I learned a lot, both about app development, about how you actually deploy apps, about some of the considerations you have to think about when designing apps, as well as a lot of things with prioritization. There were a lot of features that I want to include that I just didn't have time to do, so I had to be pretty ruthless in cutting out stuff that wasn't going to add as much value as maybe some other features were. I also realized how long this could actually take. Originally, I was hoping that I could build the app in maybe a week, and then in eight days, I could have it deployed to the store. In reality, it took me probably close to a month to actually finish building the app, including creating all the different words that I had to include with it. Thank you so much for watching. In my next video in this series, I'm gonna go deeper into monetization and how to actually make money off of an app. Until then, you can see the app as it is so far in the link in my description. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when my next video in this series comes out. Until then, thanks for watching.